a kind of a follow-up video to the virtual reality argument. Um, I did take notes regarding the comments on the video. There was a couple of response videos. Uh, the Ron Paul is smart guy, and then uh, Matt. And uh, so, well, anyway, I'll, I'll deal with the Ron Paul is smart guy first. I guess I should find out what his name is. Uh, I mean, he does watch my videos, so I guess I should respect that at least. Um, so anyway, he, he, he first argument he made was is that it's technically impossible, and. Yeah, people have made that comment in the in the um, text also, and it's you know what what in what time frame is it technically impossible? It's technically impossible tomorrow. I'll concede that much. Maybe the next ten weeks, it's technically impossible. Um, but look, you know, when you think about all the things we've done, uh, when we went to the moon, it seemed technically impossible at the time they were proposing it, especially in the time frame they thought they were going to get that done. And it is rather miraculous that we went from. 1950s technology to landing on the frickin' moon. I mean, it really was a spectacular um, achievement. And uh, there's probably been other examples. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but they're there. Um, you know, where humanity set out a mission. I mean, look, the nuclear bomb even. Come up with a nuclear bomb in the 40s. I mean, geez, that was an amazing accomplishment uh, considering that technology. Um, so, you know, that's what it kind of takes. It takes this Manhattan kind of project attitude and you can get something done. And uh, so, I mean, the, the idea that the, you know, one guy just argues that it's too complex to simulate human beings and all that. No, we've got video games that do it pretty damn good. And especially when you, you, you um, combine the idea of live video um, and, <clears throat> you know, the idea of, of organizing that or throwing that into the mix, um, there's certainly, there's no, is, in, in, at any rate, you're not creating virtually real human beings, you're just creating simulations. And we can, can create simulations that are good enough to keep us interested, uh, especially when, well, I guess I have to go to that comment now, you know, because Matt makes the argument that somehow we're not going to have enough suspension of reality to know we're in the game, and it's just a silly argument. I've argued with him before about this, and he just won't concede the point. And he has to concede, I think. I mean, he has to concede that our capacity to, um, or that, that, that there's, some, some, there's a mechanism in our brain, and when that mechanism turns off, we go into what's called the dream state. And in that state, we suspend reality. We suspend our notion that something is impossible. Because we interact with things that are completely preposterous, and yet we say it's okay, we accept it. And that acceptance can, can be created in our consciousness um, that there's no obstacle to that happening. So in that state of mind, we're not going to be sitting there searching for the um, hidden door or whatever to get us out of our virtual reality. Or we're not going to be sitting there saying, oh, I'm in virtual reality. I mean, you don't sit in the middle of your dream and say, oh, I'm just dreaming. No, you get caught up in it. And we will be caught up in virtual reality in the same way. It's, uh, and uh, so, I mean, but th th there's nothing... This idea that the technology that we're not there, yeah, we're not there yet, but we're inching towards it every day. I mean, it gets better and better. HD TV and you know the video game software gets better and better. It gets more and more addictive. People get more and more involved in these virtual experiences. Even this YouTube thing, Stickum, these things are all. This technology is there, and they have you know they have plugins for the senses as it is, exists now. They cure some deafness with electronics. They cure some blindness with electronics. Cure, uh, they augment uh, a deficiency <laughs> with technology. And we're plugging in. And th there's, all we have to do is start plugging deeper and deeper. And we're going to do that. There's no obstacle to it. So it's not a technical problem. I mean, whether it's 30 years, 50 years, or 100 years, it's a doable scenario. All right, so enough on the doable argument and enough on the not caught up in it. I mean, we, all we have to have is the desire. And so that's another part of these arguments is based on the fact that you know, part of Matt's argument is, and, and even the, the Ron Paul smart guy is not getting it. It's, it's not an elimination of desire. It's not an elimination of inconvenience. It's not an elimination of some struggle. It's an elimination of the, the, the catastrophic failure. It's, a, it's creating a fail-safe environment where it won't take you beyond a certain point. So you might have a little pinprick, but you won't have a migraine headache. Uh, you know, you might have a little cut, but your arm won't get ripped off. I mean, it's that kind of proportional diminishment of the extent or qualitative significance of the trauma that we would endure. Uh, but certainly we would be 
um, hungry, horny, you know, we would want. Want would be, that's the whole fucking point, is to put our want in an environment where it can do less damage, because that's the reality of our circumstance. Want is what's destroying us. Want is what has us driving right over the cliff. Want is, is what has us, most human beings living in me mediocrity, is because there's too much of it. There's not enough um, physical structure that can be created to satiate all that need and want and desire. Um, and we're all going to want more than we have. That's another, it's just, it's, we see what happens. I mean, if you give people a million dollars, what do they want? They want two million. You give them two million, they want ten million. They would give them ten million, they want a billion. I mean, you see it all the time. People are not satiable easily. And they just become more and more um, extravagant, more and more eccentric in their want. I mean, look, you had that Hearst guy built, built his Shangri-La or whatever, you know, and it's a preposterous environment to feed one individual because he became so preposterously, you know, Jabba the Huttish in his consumption and his desire. And that's what happens with human beings because it just isn't, you know, Christmas is never enough. We have to wake up the next day and the want is back. And so let's not pretend it's some other scenario. That's how we are built. We are built to be hungry, damn it. All right, um, so I'll get back to, I don't know if there's anything else I have to, I mean, Matt's video just, didn't, neither one of these video responses said anything. I mean, they really didn't deal with much. I mean, like I said, Matt, I've already been with, been over this with him. Um, there'd be nothing taking away in virtual reality in terms of our motivation. What would be taking away would be the, the extraordinary um, hardships, the, the negatives, the grotesque failures that happen to um, sentient organisms. Um, and, but we'd still have all the capacity to go in any direction um, imagine, with our imagination and, and, and with our desire. I mean, there really wouldn't be a limitation placed on those things. All right, so let's see what else is here. Um, one guy says it's impossible to maintain the body. I mean, come on, we already do it, okay? There's been, we've had to go to court to have people unplugged from the machines because their body's been kept alive for 10 or 15 years at preposterous expense for no good purpose. So um, who knows how long Cruzan would have lived or Quinlan if, if we didn't, if people didn't get the right to unplug them. So that's just an idiotic argument. I mean, we're already there. We can certainly do it better, but we're already there in terms of maintaining bodies. Uh, so another guy just says, crappy idea. Great argument. Um, make more arguments like that and you're going to get blocked if I didn't block you already. I mean, you really have to do better than that. Um, another point was made. It's, it really is about investing. And um, certainly we could invest in minimizing our excesses. Um, but it's just not human nature, you know, I mean, we could try to sit there and take our excesses and, you know, create a more balanced society and try to fix up other countries and fix up the lifestyle for other people and make it a better world. But even if we do all of that, it's going to take tremendous resources. There's still going to be people going to have to do uh, sacrifice and do a lot of work to keep that machinery working. Um, this building the life for every individual, a physical reality for them to interact with, it's, it's expensive. And um, especially when, you know, we, we have, our needs are much more excessive in terms of this world than they would be in, in a virtual world, because in a virtual world, we just take out all that bullshit. I mean, we take out, you have to heal your broken leg, or you have to do this, all the consequential effects of life would be eliminated in virtual reality, because in virtual reality, you'd be indestructible. You just keep playing games that you move forward. There, there would be no liabilities of life, no wear and tear. All right. Um, It'll kill humanity, another guy says. The destruction of the human race. No more evolution. So he uses that term, no more evolution. We're not evolving, Einstein. We're physically becoming weaker because we're keeping our species alive artificially and keeping them healthy artificially. And um, intellectually, we're not, we're not, the, 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 we aren't selectively breeding. So we're, we're going to stay a mutt. We're not, we're not going to become a pred pedigree. We're not evolving. There's just really no chance for that. We're, we're just... We're just, you know, wiggling a little bit through the evolutionary scale, but we're not going in any direction. There's no purposeful design in any of this. Um, we're not even being naturally selected anymore, and we're certainly not being intelligently selected. So it's just a stupid argument. Um, as for the survival of the human humanity and all that stuff, like I said, we are our consciousness. That's all that we really are, and the, uh, and the understanding that we've acquired over 10,000 years of civilization. So we're an animal with 10,000 years of civilization. 10,000 years of acquired knowledge, and that's it. So as long as we preserve those things, what, what are we taking away? We haven't taken away anything. Um, and then, then the game, look, I mean, I can't intellectually give you an argument that says, yes, human beings should live forever and ever, and there should be a zillion, billion, gazillion of them. 
I don't really see the point. I mean, I don't know how many times you have to play this game before you say it's been played enough. So, I mean, in a way, I'm saying virtual reality is a way of placating your needs. It's, it's not going to be placating my needs because I don't see any need for the next generation. But for you people that think there's a purpose in it, if you're going to exist, if you're going to think you have a reason to do that, I'm just saying create a world where you're not going to have victims because it's your victims I resent you for. It's the victims that pisses me off. It's your cavalier attitude towards the people who pay the real price for your existence that annoys the hell out of me. People are going to die right now, today, young people of horrible diseases and horrible circumstances. Um, and, and it's just, you know, they're the ones paying the fucking price. And you don't have any appreciation for the price, none whatsoever. And that sickens me. So, I mean, you're, you can accuse me of being anti-human, but um, I, I accuse you of being um, insensitive and cruel.